Aaron Fisher here, and I'm joined today by Alex Slemmer, Adam Grace, Steve Barcelona, and Ethan Fisher from Conjure Community, the world's greatest magic club. Now, today we're going to be looking at the magic and personality stylings of the man with the million dollar hands himself, Frank Garcia. So do us a favor as we get started here, hit that fantabulous follow button or that salacious subscribe button and make sure to get notified every time we go live with a new show filled with old magic. Alex, tell them what they've won. Today, you have won the magic of Frank Garcia. This is magic that really inspired a lot of people. The books that Frank Garcia put out, the super ex exclusive secrets, the super really the red book, the red book, the green book, these were influential card books on all of us, really. The, but all of my heroes for sure said that these were the books that got them started, a lot of them in magic and commercial. So Frank was known as a guy who worked for, you know, for celebrities, you know, he in New York City, he was the guy. And, uh, you know, just a lot of my heroes were sort of disciples of Frank Garcia. And it's an important chain within the lineage and part, important part of the chain within the lineage, in my opinion. I would say the Frank Garcia's magic is one of the almost by definition commercial card magic was almost invented. We often say JC Wagner's name because that's what he called his book. But I'd say that's that right. the formula and the format we're starting is greatly associated with Harry Lorraine and Frank Garcia in the time, even before JC Wagner. So Agreed. this is pretty exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. This stuff in a long time. Let's fire it up. Yeah, let's do this. It's good. It's good. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh look at this old timey stuff. This is great. As Watch you the see, I have a deck of cards often referred to as a devil's prayer book. There are 52 leaves on the view. See? Yeah. The view of the cards. They're all this different. Great. You see, that's how you can tell one card from the other. Oh. That was the gambler salute. I'm going to give the deck a cut, a few oh. more cuts. I'm going to hand you the parcel of cards, and then I want <laughs> you to cut the parcel of cards into approximately three and ten. I don't think you can do that, huh? Mm -hmm. now, put your heart and soul into this and make it seem as if every picture... <laughs> I think as uh, we go along, I'm going to ask you one simple question. Would you say that I influenced you in the way you cut the cards? No, no. No way. The no, cards no. are totally shuffled. I'm going to use the top four cards. There's one. There's a second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Since I instructed you to cut the parcel of cards into four packets, and <laughs> we're using four cards. Let's see how well you did. There's the Ace of Spades. Hey, now. There's the Ace of Diamonds. There's the Ace of Clubs. And voila, the Ace of Hearts. That's pretty good, huh? Son, I just want to ask you one more question. Aces, often referred to as the Four Bullets. In Las Vegas and in gambling parlance, where gamblers meet to play cards, they're referred to as the Four Bullets. Why? Because they're the most powerful cards in the deck of cards. And number one, you can't go any higher, nor can you go any lower. <laughs> you take the deck, split it in half, and Let's shuffle see. it intermittently so that I now have every other card shuffled, as you can see. Bing. I'll do this again so you can appreciate the beauty of this whole thing. <laughs> Watch. Splitting the deck and then butt shuffling the cards. Did he say butt? Since we have 26 cards here and 26 there, and the cards are free, <laughs> there's no way that I can tell the location of any card. I'm going to riffle the cards, but you're going to have okay. to do this fast. Tell me when to stop, and when you when you do that, you remember the card at that point. Okay, stop. Remember the card? Good. A little imagination goes a long way. It plays an important part in magic. I have the four bullets, the ace of hearts, the ace of spades, the ace of diamonds, the ace of clubs. Which is your favorite? Ace of spades. Ace of spades. That's the big bullet. This is going to help me find your card. All I do is merely load the chamber. You're thinking of a card. Mm -hmm. Watch, John. I shoot one card shot out, dropped out, rather weak shot. For the first time, name the card. Ten of spades. Ten of spades. There. He wasn't Here. sure. Oh. What I'm going to ask you to... Oh. 
have young man, there. I have but one question to ask you today. Does your mother let you leave home with that haircut? <laughs> he gets pretty mean. I cut it out. He gets pretty mean with that guy because he's like, it's okay if to these things. Like he just gets on him for not being like a good spectator. <laughs> Stand up straight, it's son. So great. Wear some it's pants. Great. It's just like everything about it's great. The way he's dressed, the pinky ring. You know what I'm totally. saying? I almost parcel, left take a out. parcel of cards. I mean, it's just I, so. I almost left it out. Right. I almost left it out so because great. he didn't get a, such a big, you know, reveal on that card. But everything else about it was so perfect. I was like, I can't just let that bad ending it's, ruin this clip. It's, it's, it's so awesome. It's just really? awesome. It's just it's awesome, awesome, you know. I mean, yeah, the magic was good. Dungaroo yeah. and a haircut like that. What are you from, California? <laughs> <laughs> so great. The magic knew, was good, but that reaction was underwhelming. Yeah. Well, there was you know, the like, feeling that he's like a student, that he was like the last guy. They, that he was the only guy who was available on the day. Find me a kid. But I Set don't him know. Down, sit down here, kid. <laughs> I said take a parcel. That's definitely a packet. Bigger than a parcel. Four yeah, it's par a parcel. Take a parcel. So this is very exciting because, you know, you really got to hear some of this stuff. You see the way Frank Garcia, he doesn't let an opportunity miss to do the ribbon spread, to do mm. the turnover. He doesn't to do that extra wide fan and then he's like ah let's try it again so it works you know you know i must last night having that problem yes yes i must admit that from now on i will no longer refer to it as the pharaoh shuffle it will now be known as butt shuffling which yes. is coined by frank garcia in that clip very nice to see frank garcia shuffling left corners into left corners always a good idea <laughs> always a good idea a little harder that way all right, this is good. Shall we watch another? Yeah, I'll see you the next one. You're gonna love this one. This one's good. What I'm gonna ask you to do is to take that 10. That's possibly one of the most interesting cards in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> possibly one of the most. Utilizing a pen. I want you to sign your name or inscribe it on your phone. <laughs> Utilizing a pen. The reason I have you do that is I think That's a flare. my statement. I couldn't possibly duplicate the signature. I don't think they had Sharpies back then. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't think so either. Make another one in the center. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Put your phone number. Maybe your phone social security one. number. Utilize this pen. Thanks for the pen. Yeah, and that's the way I got it. Now, this is your card with your signature. There's no way that I can duplicate that. No. Oh, you take well. that card and place it back. <laughs> Fine. Mess this up. I'll Fine. What I'm going to do enough. is cut the cards, not thinking what I'm doing. Give it a mix, a shuffle. <laughs> and again. To assure everyone the card is hopelessly lost. Do you know at this point where the card is? No, I have no idea. That's good because neither do I. But what I intend to do is to find your card under rather strange and interesting circumstances. You'll notice that I'm shuffling the cards face to face. So that what I do is what you see. Those cards are mixed up, huh? What a mess. <laughs> what I'm going to take the cards and push them in flush with the deck and strip them out. Hello. A series of cuts. I think you'll agree with me that these cards would have to be face up, face down, totally mm -hmm. discombobulated. As a matter of fact, these are back to back, face to face, all. Learn this from a young kid. Out. How long would it take you to unscramble these cards? Mm, a few minutes. And notice that some are back to back. Faster than you can say, John. Look. Stand up straight, kid. Did you? No, I didn't. Just happen. Every card across the board <laughs> is one way. With the exception of one card, which is face down, which I believe has to be the ten of spades. You see it? Just happened. Mm -mm -mm. You see? Just happened. Really good. That's yeah. Wonderful. It was like deft. A lot. It was deft. And you yeah. notice he's a bit of a demo man, but you know, the handling is very neat. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. hard. No it's extra just, moves. Not hard. No, no flourish to it, really. Yeah, and it's not hard to do, but it's hard to do so neatly. Yeah. Hey, clean, Aaron. Yeah. In your opinion, did he, did he really have the million dollar hands? I think he felt like they were insured for a million dollars. That's the definition. His hands <laughs> were worth a million dollars if he lost his hands. He had a policy that was going to give him a million dollars. When he when he was alive, like during during his reign, did he? Uh, did, was he, I mean, his, did his peers consider him to be the best at the time? His peers considered him to be, like Harry Lorraine, one of the most effective at promoting 
card magic. So, you know, he always had stories about showing this to Joan Rivers or, you know, appearing on the Today Show where I performed this. And, you know, he was always at some large industrial show or headed off to, you know, work on some TV show. And he had, he had names for things in his book like TV opener, you know, <laughs> things like that. And so where the truth TV began opener. and ended is, you know, I showed this one to the Sultan of Brunei. He, he was having a toothache and I was there to show some magic to him and the ladies in the harem. And, uh, but he had a toothache, so he couldn't help as much as I liked, but you'll be able to help more than he would, right? All right, stand up straight, son. Cut off the <laughs> Fix your collar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. You know, so what, I mean, honestly, that there's a great, there's always been a, a, a thing in magic, right? Because the heaviest sleight of hand experts, by and large, weren't even magicians, didn't even want photos taken of them. But in magic, your job is to make sure to some degree that as many people know you exist as possible. It's a show business thing. So, you know, I think guys like Frank Garcia understood that clearly. You notice the way he talks, he's got a certain manner of talking, we've been laughing about it, but it has a few of the hallmarks of a person that perhaps didn't come by that vocabulary naturally. It feels a little bit like big words thrown in later to complete the illusion so that he could be the musician that was hanging out in, in these high tone places yeah. so created a use of words that made it sound a little artificially i think fancy but he's I, a hustler i think <laughs> he's day, a hustler. he was a guy's guy he was an old time fellow and he'd gotten himself the wonderful suits and the pinky rings and he'd realized that the difference between doing magic at what we would call the hooters and doing magic uh for the president's friends is uh, really down to the suit you wear and the gleam in your eye. So worth every penny. He does sound like Hugh Downs. Well said, Newell. Through the process of utilizing this pen, sign your name. Off a small parcel of cards and goodness, did you see it? Just happened. <laughs> There's a real sense that this magic doesn't require you. And in his case, that's good. I'm really nostalgic for this kind of thing, though, too. You know, it's like you you look at it in a way that it's uh, it seems when like you were uh, a kid. It was like, yeah, it was like it was the thing. It yeah, was right there. It was what exactly it was, you know, yeah, in exactly. Best sense, in its best sense, you know, mm -hmm. let's watch another. Let's do let's, it. I like to listen to the smooth sound. I do. Jazz card magic. The jazzy card magic of Frank Garcia and his wayward son. Or this is like the child of the lady he's dating or something. <laughs> I'm gonna take and utilize the four queens by placing the two red ones <laughs> to my right. One of you. And the two black well ones utilized. To my left. Whatever the case might be. And what I want you to do is to take the card that you signed, Ten of Spades, with the two signatures and place it face down in between the two red queens and the two black ones, whichever you prefer. Whichever such strikes your fancy. Whichever such strikes your fancy. Want to change your mind? No. I knew you were going to do that. Hey. John, this is your card with your signature. Watch. Cutting them into the deck, totally losing them, I'm going to place the deck on the table. Now watch this. I'm going to cut off about half the deck. By weighing the matter, I know that your card lies in that parcel of cards, not in this one, but there. I refer you now to the two queens. You'll notice that they're two simple ladies. Mm -hmm. Examine them. Make sure that there's no escaping gas, no... Trap no escaping gas. Two <laughs> Those ladies are underutilized. The two queens. I'm really going to take and turn the two queens over and refer you to this packet. <laughs> I see card come. Did you see me do anything? No, I didn't. You were impressed by the finger movement, though. Look, the reason I ask is because <laughs> there's a card that's <laughs> with two signatures, which I believe it to be your card. Strangely enough, John. You're impressed by the finger the movement. In between the two queens. Now, if I can <laughs> make it come, I can certainly make it go by reversing the procedure. Card. Oh. Made that pink. No, I didn't. John. One queen. Two queens. You may be wondering what happened to your card. Sandwich in the center. You'll notice that there are two queens face up, one card face down. Wouldn't it prove interesting if that card were the ten of spades 
Was it Steve Shiggy? That's a miracle. I you know, that's you fantastic. Let's pause. Take the floor, Steve. Take the floor. That is a fantastic trick right there. It really is. The you know, and when it comes to the thing, you know, he had to do the thing there. It was like glass. Yeah. Well, you do absolutely smooth as glass. You know how we've just gotten through saying that he's not doing really hard stuff, but he's doing it incredibly neatly. Mm -hmm. Well, he's an interesting, if we want to talk about demo man at all, it's a very mm -hmm. interesting combo because he's certainly doing things like projecting a lot of skill with his pinky and his double undercut, but that's really simple stuff. Mm -hmm. The cuts and the things, and he's doing it very perfectly. But then nestled within that is a real classical sleight of hand training where when he's actually going to do a secret move, it's instantaneous. It can be incredibly difficult or easy to do. It makes no never mind. Within, within this beautiful construct of a very skillful guy who's just doing beautiful, neat things, he's buried like heavy duty sleight of mm -hmm. hand is being done in a masterful way. Yeah. Um, so that he is simultaneously a demo man and just a badass with cards. I mean, it's really, it's a real. That was, I mean, up. what we saw right there was badass. And you were yeah. talking particularly about that last moment, right? Well, right before that last moment, right? The last steal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. it's so smooth. Break and then rock it. You know, obviously, this is the, you, you only get that way from tons of practice, right? And for show. years and years. I mean, we're shows. seeing Frank Garcia here. This is, he's, he strikes me as middle-aged here, right? A lot of days on the trade show floor. Doing he carpet. spent a lot of days before this. And you can see that. That's the biggest thing, I think, you know? He's just look you know, when he one of the guys I always kid, looked up to. When he says to the kid, something like, did you like that? And the kid gives <laughs> something and goes, yes, but you were impressed by the finger movements. <laughs> And so there was a real sort of not only unflappability to it, but a mm -hmm. real sort of yes and thing going on. He's right. throwing out his line, no matter what this kid says, he was going to find a way to make it sound like what the kid had said was, mm -hmm. yes, incredible. You know, as so the kid goes, well, I didn't think it was pretty good, but yeah, you know, but you saw the toe and that's why you were so amazed moving forward. Mm -hmm. And he was just not <laughs> flustered by anything he had four more where that came from there's nothing <laughs> yeah absolutely him. very understated too i think there's a a nice thing there because he's got his you know he's got his things and he's got all that stuff happening but when it comes time to the magic he's really just doing it mm -hmm. and he's letting it speak for itself and i think it it really plays you know and it's funny when you watch these clips, you would imagine that these things are much longer than they are. In, in my memory, I imagine these as like five to five minute presentations, but they're short, right? It's like to the point and he's just in there and he's out, but you see mm -hmm. a miracle and it's, it's great. Just great stuff. It's one of the things that's so confusing about the books, you know, is because there's a lot of tricks like that length and there's a lot of them seem to require like an eight to 15 card setup. So one is always left to wonder how, if ever, he went from one to the next. You know, mm -hmm. one's left with the feeling that, wow, he's published 20 openers in this book. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of 10-card setup tricks in this book. You know? <laughs> but in reality, he mostly probably just did Chicago opener, which, of course, is one of the things he, let's say, did a lot of popularizing of with his, uh, with his version in the Red Book. Yeah, no doubt. Million dollar card mysteries or million dollar secrets. Million dollar secrets, that's right. A parcel of cards. I know, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> All right. So now we just my did act. The visitor. We just did the visitor, but now we're going to go to Kings and Aces. This is another you can see constant, exciting theme. Ah, kid, I see you're still here. As you can mm -hmm. see, the that's really like magic. I'm going to riffle the cards in an upward direction. I want you to tell me when to stop. Okay, stop. Right here. Fine. By virtue of the fact that you stopped me at the seven, which has nothing to do with the trick, the first face down card I come to will be the one we'll use. This then will become your card, but I don't want you to look at it just yet. Again, give me a repeat performance. Tell me when to stop. Okay, stop. Right here. There's a nine. The first three face down cards I come to, I will use and place directly behind your card. There's one, there's two, there's the third one. Simple question. 
And I want a simple answer. Would it prove interesting if these three cards matched that one? Yes, it would. Yes? That would be a miracle. Now, let's see how lucky I've been. There's the king of hearts. There's the king of clubs. There's the king of diamonds. Conclusively, I've shown you the king of diamonds, king of clubs, king of hearts. So therefore, that card should be the what? King of spades. Turn it over as I lay the uh, three kings onto the table. Now that looks, I know what you're saying. You say, well, he made a mistake. Actually, it was premeditated. For example, if I, I could take that ace, do this, and change it into a king. You see, it's not here. So then, this king should match these kings. But watch, this is where the magic comes in. Did you see me do anything? No. I just did it. There's an ace, the ace of diamonds. There's the ace of clubs. There's the ace of hearts. And the true test is to change that last king into the ace Boom. of clubs. Boom! Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that that marvelous? there is a master. That a is just master. marvelous. That there is a Frank Garcia major alpha routine. Yep. FYI. It's got all those elements you were talking about before. Totally. <laughs> and and everything is easy. He's not doing anything fancy. He's right. doing a lot of, you know, a big turnover here. And he's and it's all very simple, but he's squeezing every moment out of it. One of the things you get about Frank Garcia that you should be aware of is it really shows you what a formal close-up with interactive elements plays like. Because Frank Garcia, he's doing a formalized type of magic. Notice how he's got a lot of questions answered. I'm going to ask you a simple question. I want a simple answer. <laughs> you know, the answer is yes. What's the answer? The kid goes, yes. He goes, of course, the answer is yes. So that's what I'll do. And he's really taking this kid on things that are, he's made concessions to have it feel interactive. But it's not. It's for a large group of people. And it's, and it's well, well structured in advance. You know, he's he's going to be doing that just that way. And uh, I think it really works because I think uh, sometimes we have to set our levels. We have a certain trick and we don't realize what kind of whether the trick invites a lot of poking mm -hmm. and peeking or, or maybe it doesn't. And we sometimes play it in a way which is invites too much or not enough, right? So it's a very important when you look at his material that you notice he doesn't break for anyone. Mm. It's not a conversation. Mm -mm. I, I bet it was very interesting to see him work for a large group of people just to see, you know, what he's doing, just to, using his skill set and the way he's communicating. I bet it was just a completely different, uh, different beast because he is, he's got his thumb on the whole thing. But at the same time, you know, he's letting, letting it breathe if spectators want to react because he, he's looking for those reactions at every moment. Mm -hmm. I bet sort of just, you know, probably, probably pretty fun. And you know darn well that with one kind of undesirable spectator there, he's just whipping out the demos. Yeah. 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 It's important to keep that in mind, folks. There's no way around the fact that in order for him to make his trick show as best as it can, he's got to play it as it must be played with the performer, with the spectators he's got in front of him, or else it doesn't play. You know what I mean? Right. One of these days, I want to ask my brother Ethan how this particular old timey card magic plays for him. I feel mm -hmm. like it's a. I, I would. I would love to find out how a regular person who's seen a lot of magic would uh, respond to this particular. You know, it's a little bit like listening to music from the '60s or something, and you just sort of want to know. Uh, it's not exactly like a person that never heard the Beatles. It's more like a person who never heard the Dave Clark Five. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. For Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. So, which is a great one. Woman, have you got cheating on your mind? So what are we going to do next? Well, Frank Garcia has always got cheating on his mind. He just showed us cheating on his mind in the Kings and the Aces. But now he's going to deal with a little something he likes to call overkill. And at two minutes plus, this is an epic, epic alpha routine. By it's a big routine, yeah. Now, okay. you can see, I have a deck of cards. I'm going to give them a tiny shuffle, tiny cut, <laughs> and I'm going to place the cards in front of you. What I want you to do is, as I turn my back is to cut off a small parcel of cards, not parcel. to include 15. All right? Not to include You've 15. That. Not to include 15? Less, less than 15. Cards on less than 15. Table and do it in silent fashion so you don't give me any clue as to how many cards you cut to. But it's please remember, remember the number. Have you done that? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Take those cards and place them beneath the map in the far corner underneath. Have you done that? Yes? Good. Good. Now, if I turn around and I look here, I couldn't possibly know how many cards you cut to. Now, what I'm going to do is deal out the number of cards across the board, like so. Oh, that's a great trick. It's a good trick. It's a fooler. Okay, let's assume, because I don't know, both conjecture on my part. Let's assume you cut 12 times. Starting from this end, count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you would remember the 10 of spades. Mm -hmm. If you cut uh, nine cards, the same thing would apply. Have you done that? Mm -hmm. You have a card implanted in your mind. I have no way of knowing. Is that true? No. Okay. I, and as, as you are thinking, and as you're gazing into my eyes, I get the impression I see uh, a courtyard, I see royalty, I see a king. Would the card that you're thinking of be the king of hearts? Yes, it would. Yes? Yeah, it is. <laughs> now, curiously enough, prior to the performance, I took the liberty of <laughs> placing a prediction inside this box, which is on the tab. Open it up and read it out loud. You will think of the king of hearts. You will think of the king of hearts. And if that's not enough, curiously enough, you'll notice that we've been using a red deck throughout. Mm -hmm. As I spread these red cards out, one strikes out more so than the others. It has a blue back. Wouldn't it prove interesting if it, too, were the king of hearts? <laughs> and the most curious coincidence, if that's not enough, look, the parcel of cards that you place beneath the mat if I held those over the King of Hearts, that bottom card would also be the King of Hearts. Killer, killer, killer. This is uh, <laughs> be a quick story, you know. There was a period of about 10 years where I was a constant invitee of Alfred P. Sloan at General Motors to perform magic for him and his house is on uh, West Hampton and East Hampton and other parts of Long Island and New York. And, uh, one day he said to me, you know, we have a very important party coming up. Uh, we love to have you perform. Uh, it's the 30th time you've come to perform for our family for so many times. Please, this time we want overkill. So <laughs> now, tonight, overkill. In honor of Mr. Alfred P. Sloan, <laughs> CEO of General Motors, and uh, beloved to everyone here in the family. I request. <laughs> Cut off a parcel of cards. Cut off a parcel of cards. So was he worth it? Every penny. All 30 times. That's clearly the point. He was worth every penny. And don't you forget it. I, for one, think, I mean, he called it overkill. Yeah. Again, now another opener. I, I think that's a Paul Harris trick, isn't it? Overkill. Paul Harris' trick. That's correct. Yeah, that's Paul Harris's. He does it a little different. He did mm -hmm. the secrets of the Puerto Rican gambler in there. He, uh -huh. they used to joke Uncredited. Around. Everything. I wasn't going to bring it up, but uncredited. There's a little bit of a bummer. The FT cut is in those books, and that's when Frank Thompson stopped speaking to Frank Garcia, is when <laughs> the FT cut in those books, uh, for sure. You no, know, Frank didn't ask permission. The problem is Frank Garcia knew what good material looked like. <laughs> he loved to perform it. He loved to make it his own. He had the skills required to do anything he wanted with any of it. And, uh, and then he put it all in those books. And, uh, and he did not care. So he, like, he was such a good sleight of hand artist, he had access to all this underground material. He really did, mm -hmm. really good with cards, you know, and so people showed yeah. him stuff and then he just did whatever he wanted to with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. I could have watched that all day long. I know, is there more? Or... I think we can get another one. I think we'll have another Frank Garcia and we can do that uh, early next week. It'll be, it'll be fun. Oh, wait for next about. Thursday, please, please, please. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. All right, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do us a quick favor and hit the fantabulous follow button and the salacious subscribe button so you'll be notified the next time we go live, which will be in just a couple of days. Stick around if you're a CC Club member for the after show. If you're not a CC Club member, shame on you. You should check it out. It's the best 
fastest growing magic club in the entire universe online or off and we would love to see you there.